section 5. Classification systems for psychological disorders. Introduction. In this lecture, you shall be exposed to the two classification systems of mental disorder commonly acceptable to the mental health practitioners. These are the Diagnostic and the Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder DSM, and the International Classification of Disease ICD. However, DSM-4 is a major focus in this lecture and this is described with examples. Objectives. At the end of this lecture, you should be able one identify the two classification system of mental disorders. Two, identify the five axes of DSM-4. Pretests. Briefly explain why you think the five axes are used in DSM-4 with an example of a disorder. Two, what is GAF scale? Content. Classifying psychological disorders. Categorization is essential to our survival because it allows critical distinctions to be made. Diagnosis is a type of expert level categorization. It is used by mental health professionals such as clinical psychologists to, to enable them to make important distinctions, e.g. schizophrenia versus bipolar disorder with psychotic features. A major purpose of diagnosis is to make predictions. Given a particular diagnosis, what is the likely cause of the disorders? Will the disorder respond to the treatment? Which treatment? Success is making such predictions depend on the availability of a diagnostic system that can be used to classify disorders in a reliable fashion. There are two classification systems of mental illness commonly acceptable to the mental health practitioners. These are the Diagnostic and the Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders DSM, and the International Classification of Diseases ICD. Presently, the DSM in use is the 4th edition DSM-4, while the ICD is the 10th edition ICD-10. The most frequently used system for classifying psychological disorders is the American Psychiatric Association's Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder DSM. More than 200 psychological disorders are listed in the fourth edition of the DSM. One reason for revising the DSM is that diagnoses based on the categories listed in the earlier editions were not sufficiently reliable. At times, different mental health professionals that interviewed the same patient failed to agree on the diagnosis. To remedy this problem, the developers of the DSM added rules for making diagnoses. The DSM spells how the numbers, severity and duration of symptoms that define a diagnostic category. The DSM concentrates on describing symptoms and providing rules for making diagnoses without offering special models to explain the disorders. The use of diagnostic labels can be, can be a double-edged sword. Diagnosis can help advance our knowledge about the causes of disorders and aid in making treatment decisions. But diagnostic label may also create a stigma 
that can be difficult to overcome when looking for housing a job or simply interacting with other people. Labels inevitably affect how we perceive and respond to others, especially here in Africa. Our responses to those labeled as having psychological disorders are often different from our responses to other people. In Nigeria, people seem to have difficulties relating with someone who has been diagnosed to have a particular mental disorder. The major DSM-4 categories and examples of each are listed in the law. ITQ. A major advantage of mental health classification will be A. To appropriately label people having abnormally by mental professionals. B. To agree to a consensus among mental health professionals what constitutes each illness. C. To understand the differences between mental health issues in different cultures. If you pick A, you are wrong. Why? The purpose of classification of mental illnesses is far from labeling and it's never intended for this, which is why DSM is expected only to be used by qualified professionals. B, if you picked B, you are right. Yes, one of the major reasons for DSM was to have common means of identifying issues in mental health. If you picked C, you are also wrong. Why? Although DSM helps us to understand differences, but it is not to understand these differences across cultures. This is a shortcoming of DSM. A condensed version of the DSM-4. Axis 1. Clinical disorders or other conditions may be a focus of clinical attention. For example, disorders usually diagnosed in infancy, childhood, or adolescent, e.g., pervasive developmental disorders, cognitive disorders, e.g., delirium, mental disorders due to a general medical condition. Substance-related disorder, psychotic disorder, adjustment disorders, EDC. Axis 2. Personality disorders and mental retardation. For example, personality disorders, e.g. borderline, antisocial, dependent, Mental retardation, e.g. mild, moderate, severe mental retardation. Axis 3. General medical conditions that are potentially relevant to the understanding or management of the individual's mental disorders. For example, HIV AIDS. Cancer. Axis 4. Psychosocial and environmental problems. For example, problems with primary support, educational problems, housing problems, and economic problems, EDC. Axis 5. Global Assessment of Functioning, GAF Scale. The GAF Scale considers psychological, social, and occupational functioning on a hypothetical continuum of mental health or illness. Do not include impairment in functioning due to physical or environmental limitations. The code in the GAF scale and their implications are described as follows. Code, description, 
91 to 100. That is, superior functioning in a wide range of activities, life problems. 1881 to 90. That is, absent or minimal symptoms such as mild anxiety before exams. 71 to 80. That is, symptoms are present, they are transient and expectable reactions to psychosocial stressor such as temporarily falling behind in school work. 61 to 70, that is, some mild symptoms such as depressed mood and mild insomnia. 51 to 60, moderate symptoms such as flat affect and circumstantial speech. 41 to 50, serious symptoms such as suicidal ideation, severe obsessional rituals. 31 to 40, some impairment in reality testing or communication such as speech is at times illogical, obscure or irrelevant. 21 to 30, that is behavior is considerably influenced by decisions or hallucinations. 11 to 20, that is, some danger of altered self or others such as suicide attempts. 1 to 10, that is, persistent danger of severely altered self or others such as recurrent violence or persistent inability to maintain minimal personal hygiene. Zero, that is, inadequate information. ITQ. If a man has a chronic medical illness, which precipitated the clinical depression of a man, you are a clinical psychologist writing his report. On what axis will you note his medical condition? A axis 4, B axis 2, C axis 3. If you pick A, you are wrong because axis 4 identifies psychosocial and environmental problems which may affect the clinical diagnosis. If you pick B, then you are wrong because axis 2 identifies Conditions which are relatively stable over lifetime, such as personality and mental retardation. And if you pick C, you are right, as the study identifies general medical conditions which may affect clinical conditions. Summary. The lecturer has been able to explain two classification systems of mental disorders commonly acceptable to the mental health practitioners. These are the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders DSM, and the International Classification of Disease ICD. The DSM-4 has five axes and this was described with examples of disorder categorized in each of these five axes. General Assessment Functioning, GAF, in Axis 5 was further described with codes available in it with the example of likely disorder. End of study session 5. Thank you for listening. <laughs>